and welcome everyone today from whichever part of the world, Australia, that you are from. My name is Victoria. We're here with Maggie. Maggie will be kicking off in a little while. I just wanted to speak to you this morning about why we're here and, and what we're going to help you um, hopefully with today. So we're very, very excited. This is the first, oh, you're from Perth. Thanks, um, Clive. I'm in Bustleton. So yay, WA. Um, this is the first of an eight part series. So very excited to kick this off today with you. Um, I've seen the slides. They're very informative. Uh, if you've not met me before, my name is Victoria. I'm a digital uh, business advisor working for Business Station, but I'm also an Amazon seller and have been for four years. So I'm very, very excited about coming in and, and being here today with you. And the, the Amazon um, selling journey is... Uh, um, is very different from any other selling journey that I have um, been on. So it's it's very great. It's wonderful that you're here. Um, we are here with um, Business Station. So Business Station, like I said, I'm a digital business advisor with Business Station. And luckily from a federal grant, Australian federal grant, we can give uh, small businesses advice for seven hours for only $44. So it's an amazing, amazing um, program that you're very, very welcome to jump in on. If you need any information on it, um, it you can email me personally. My name is Victoria. So victoria at businessstation.com.au. And um, I, I'm not going to take up too much more of your time, but yeah, very, very excited to welcome Maggie. Maggie is the Awareness Marketing Manager for Amazon in Australia. So over to you, Maggie. Enjoy. I'm really, okay. really excited. I'm really, really excited too. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. I know we are years into virtual events at this point, um, so any time that we can capture uh, people's interest and attention is still super exciting to me. So um, thank you, Victoria, and everybody at Business Station for helping us put on this eight-part series. Hopefully you'll be with us the next uh, eight, seven, coming, subsequent seven Thursdays um, to learn all that you need to know about selling on Amazon. Today's session is going to be very much focused on the basics, the introduction, um, assuming that you are coming to hear about selling on Amazon for the very first time, although I know that might not be the case for everybody here today. Um, so I will reiterate a little bit of an introduction, but Victoria did a fine job of at least preempting my, my little spiel. So um, as Victoria said, my name is Maggie. I am, am an awareness marketing manager for selling on Amazon. I've been working here at Amazon Australia for the last two and a half years. I'm based at our Sydney headquarters. Um, you can probably pick up from my accent. I am not Australian. I, uh, I am in fact American. I moved over here a couple of years ago, actually before working at Amazon. So when I had the opportunity to join the team, I was well aware of the Amazon marketplace in America that I've essentially grown up shopping on. And I was really, really excited to get to be part of the early days of our marketplace here in this country, which is now my home. Um, Amazon has been available to Australian customers for coming on five years, five years in December. So we'll be celebrating our fifth birthday. Um, and before I was an awareness marketing manager, I actually worked one-on-one -on -one with businesses like yourself to learn about selling on the marketplace, set up a selling account, launch and grow their Amazon selling businesses, both in Australia and then expanding around the world. So when I get to do sessions like this, or in this case, a series, um, it's one of my favorite things to do because it's taking me back to the work that I've done with a number of businesses of all sizes um, over the last couple of years. So like I said, today's session will be very basic. We'll be covering um, a couple of different areas at a high-ish level just to get a sense for what you as a business may need to get yourself set up selling on Amazon. Um, subsequent sessions will cover these topics uh, in more detail. We'll also be sharing uh, some resources in the form of links uh, from Business Station after this session. So if things feel uh, like a lot of information or overwhelming, I certainly hope that's not the case, but I understand this is a 
it's a hefty topic, as Victoria will attest to as a seller herself. Um, so no worries if you feel like this is a lot of new information at once. We'll be back every week to keep talking about these topics in more detail. We've got plenty of ways for you to be able to re-engage with the content um, or help links and our team here at Amazon Australia in Sydney, um, we have lots of people who work directly with businesses to get set up. So um, that is, uh, there's plenty more where this is coming from, I guess is what I'm, I'm getting at. I'll give you a really quick just introduction to the concept of Amazon. Um, I can pass it back to you, Victoria, before that, if you'd like, or we could, we can jump in. You tell me. Let's just jump in. Let's do it. Okay, cool. Well, I'll um, I'll start with just sort of the concept. Hopefully, if you're joining today's session, you're at least aware of um, Amazon as a marketplace that you can buy lots of things on. We, uh, or we, I should say, the, the founders of Amazon nearly 30 years ago now conceptualized Amazon as like the everything store. We started uh, as exclusively an online marketplace for books. Um, I think a lot of people in the early to mid nineties were like, why would you sell books online? We've got plenty of great ways to buy books <laughs> otherwise at bookstores. Um, and in the last three decades, it's evolved into something so much bigger. And the way that we think about Amazon is the concept of a flywheel. So kind of like a, a bicycle wheel or a car tire. Um, we, we require an input that then creates a virtuous uh, ever-growing continuum, I guess you could say. And that input is sellers like yourself. It's businesses who have already, in most cases, invested in a product that they think consumers are going to love. And we need that kind of influx of sellers with products to kick off our flywheel. Sellers provide selection. Selection is all of the stuff that you can see when you go on to amazon.com.au and look for a product. And when there's tons of products to choose from, we know that customers will come. And when customers come, it increases traffic to all sellers. I love the, the adage we often use, a rising tide lifts all ships. When our marketplace grows and more selection is available, more customers will shop and the cycle continues. So that's sort of the, the basis for the marketplace concept in case you're not familiar with selling on a marketplace. Um, I'm, I would love to know, uh, I guess, in the chat, what types of businesses you guys um, maybe have established or are hoping to establish, what types of products, what um, ways of selling you are currently engaged in, just to get a sense for if marketplaces are a brand new concept or something that you guys are well-versed in. So feel free to throw those in the chat just so I can get a sense for who we're talking to. Um, and while you're doing that, I'm gonna kick off the, uh, the official presentation. This, uh, as I said, is going to cover the basics while you are um, hearing the, the spiel, the content that I'll be delivering. Feel free to just engage with the chat and send us all of the questions you might have. Victoria is going to be monitoring the chat while I'm presenting. And please, Victoria, interrupt me. Tell me if we need to pause and, and cover a topic more thoroughly. And then at the end, um, Victoria and I will engage in a bit of a discussion about her experience as a seller so that we might be able to answer some of your questions more anecdotally. And then at the end, of course, we can cover off any questions that we haven't covered or we haven't touched. Um, so just a really quick look through this. Yeah, we've yeah, got sorry. water bottles, we've got t-shirt yeah, printing, skincare, uh, machine embroidery, yes. digital data work. Awesome. Okay, so I'm seeing a big online presence from Steph. That's Office Express. Love that. Especially that large catalog size. Very cool. Oh, KDP Books. We love KDP. That stands for Kindle Direct Publishing for anybody who is not aware. That's another of Amazon's products. Personalized Kindles. Fun, fun products to do as well. That's lots of fun. I love Fantastic. that. Fantastic. Okay. Well, keep it coming. I will... See if I can smoothly start sharing my screen here. Give me a moment. All righty, can we see my screen? Oh, nope, not yet. There we go, sure. Okay, I think we're up. 
Am I good? Victoria, can you, can you see my screen? Fantastic. Right, Thank you. Everybody for the yep, yep. All good. Yes. Perfect. Thanks, Maggie. Okay. All righty. Just always want to make sure I know what's going on here. Okay. So as I already said, my name is Maggie Dedrick. I am a marketing manager based in Sydney. This is the first of our eight part webinar series. Um, a lot of the times, especially since um, moving here to Australia and the Amazon marketplace becoming a little bit more popular, people are often asking me like, how do you become a seller in Amazon? Like, how do people end up getting products on the marketplace? And lucky you, that's what we're gonna be talking about today. So this is our sort of order of events. I think this will cover us for about 30 minutes. That'll give us plenty of time to chat at the end. Um, but we'll be talking about registering for a selling account. So everything that you need to know, it's not complicated, but there are a couple of checks and balances that we employ, um, mostly to make sure that this is a safe and secure marketplace for customers and for sellers. We'll be covering the basics of selling on Amazon, similar to what I just mentioned about just the concept of a marketplace. Uh, learning how to navigate Seller Central, which is the online portal that sellers gain access to when they register for a selling account and where you can get additional support. This will be a common theme. We know that this is just a one-off webinar and selling on Amazon is a journey, like Victoria said. So we wanna make sure that you are empowered to receive support, um, whether you decide to start today or in a month or a year. So I mentioned that I'm American. I have, I feel like I've probably been shopping on the marketplace since I can remember. I actually, when I started working at Amazon, I was curious to know when my family opened up a selling account. And it was actually in 2002. So just a couple of years after the Amazon marketplace was invented or like made live in America. And of course, for many years, the, first, the only things that my parents were buying were books because that was all that was available. And now to give you a sense of the zoomed out presence of Amazon, we now have more than 16 dedicated stores across various countries and that, includes a base of hundreds of millions of active customer accounts worldwide. Just to break it down uh, by the numbers for our market here in Australia, we have more than 6,500 sellers who have sold more than 25 million products globally in our stores with 50% of all of those units coming from third-party sellers like yourself. So that's businesses who decide to utilize the marketplace as an additional sales channel. And I say globally because Australian sellers aren't just selling to Australian customers. Australian sellers are selling to customers all around the world. And global selling is a big topic that we'll be covering off throughout this whole series. So uh, just to give you a sense of the scope, in the US, selling partners sell 7,500 products per minute. And on average, selling partners make over $200,000 in annual sales. That's a figure from 2021, just in case things are changing, which they are, of course. And in a world where e-commerce has seen massive growth over the last two years, for obvious reasons, um, it makes sense that, you know, we're seeing a lot more interest in selling. It's, an, it's a prime time to take advantage of um, selling online. If you haven't already, putting your business online through the, through, in the form of a, your own website or an Amazon selling account. Um, but we know this is where customers are, as you can see by these numbers. So it's a great time to consider um, Amazon as either an additional sales channel or if you are not yet online, a great entry point to doing so. Uh, as I said, we have lots and lots of stores. The global expansion of the Amazon marketplace has made it so much more accessible and less costly for businesses to reach customers around the world. So when you register for an Amazon selling account, Amazon automatically creates what we call merged accounts that give you access to that breadth of global marketplaces. That includes North America, so US, Canada, Mexico. We've got a number of different marketplaces in the Europe region. And then here in APAC, we also have Japan, Singapore, and then our own Australian marketplace. So by, by registering uh, as an Amazon seller and gaining access to that merged accounts feature, it allows you to unify the selling experience for yourself across Amazon's international markets, but it also lets you more easily manage and scale your business because I'm often asked in this part of the presentation, 
do I have to sell everywhere? Is Amazon going to make me export products to the Netherlands, for example? And the answer is no. You can absolutely opt in and pick and choose which of these global marketplaces you want to sell in. And that can just be Australia. If you are only interested in helping to reach customers that are outside of your region and, and leveraging Amazon to do so, that's totally fine. You'll have an active or you'll have a selling account kind of waiting in the wings for you in those 13 uh, global marketplaces. You can select the specific stores that you want to expand into at any given time. You're not required to list your products in those stores. The main advantage is that when the time comes, if expansion is on your like business plan or roadmap, it means you don't have to go through the Amazon account registration process again. So we'll touch on the cost of selling globally a little bit more later. It's a bit of a matrix just based on where you originally register and then where you expand into. Um, but just know this is a massive simplification of our global network that makes reaching customers around the world as simple as I think possible. <laughs> So the next part will be important for um, everybody out there who is a brand owner and those of you who are reselling products that maybe are manufactured by others, this is relevant as well. So before signing up for an account on Amazon, you'll wanna make sure you have some information at the ready. Um, knowing this now means like, if you decide to register soon, uh, just make sure you have these things in order. It's just, like a fractured experience if you click on sign up for a selling account and aren't ready to provide some of the uh, verification documents that will be needed. So in addition to an email address and a phone number, you will need a bank account number and a BSB number along with it. You will also need a chargeable credit card. We use credit card billing in order to charge you your monthly selling fees and your um, referral fees we deposit the revenue that comes from your sales into the bank account that you provide us. For verification purposes, you'll need a color scan of a government ID, both sides, and a utility bill or a bank account statement that shows the same address as the government ID. So be sure to have this information as well as tax information ready. That'll be the first step of signing up for a selling account. Uh, it goes without saying, maybe it doesn't, but it's just in order to sm smooth and streamline this process, make sure that the images that you provide are clear. They include the identification that is being asked of you. Remember to upload front and back. Um, you'll obviously keep getting asked to re-upload things if the quality is not good. It's like any other online registration process, I feel like. So that's why I feel like it goes without saying, but just so you know, um, you'll often... Uh, or I find a lot of sellers just end up with, with struggles with the quality of their scans. So make sure that's there. And of course, if you're providing a bank statement, make sure all of the pages are included. And they need to be dated within the last 90 days. I guess that's worth noting as well. Okay, so let's get into the kind of bigger question that comes when you are in the beginning of your registration process you need to decide which selling plan makes the most sense for you and your business. And there's pros and cons to each. The individual plan costs 99 cents per sale. So there's no monthly subscription fee to be an individual seller. You will pay essentially a 99 cent commission on each sale. Um, so this makes sense for businesses who are thinking that you will only sell 40 or fewer items per month. Um, it's good, I guess, if you're still deciding if you, if you want to, well, I guess if you're, if you're still in the process of creating your business or like deciding what products it is you want to sell and you're not looking for access to advanced tools or programs yet. To be very transparent, I feel like this is just an interim solution. Being a professional seller is really, truly the best way to strive toward a successful selling business on Amazon. So it could be a way for you to help get started while you figure out some of the details that you need. Professional selling plans are, like I said, pretty much the standard um, the standard solution if you're looking to, to really invest in this as a, a sales channel for your business. It's good, of course, if you're looking, if you're hoping to sell more than 40 products a month, which I would hope that you are. And professional selling plans 
I think the bigger benefit is that you get access to advanced reporting uh, features like API integrations, um, advertising options, things like that. So uh, like I said, we're going to be sharing a lot more resources with you guys um, after this webinar that will come from Business Station. We'll provide a link to um, compare individual and professional selling plan features for Amazon Australia as well as Amazon US. So lots more details will be made available soon. Before you go on to that next slide, Maggie, I was just yeah. wondering if I could jump in there from an yeah. um, experience point of view as well. Sure. When you are coming in to um, sell your products, a lot of the time it actually takes quite a while to actually get the product and perhaps a while to set up your seller central yeah. as well. So I actually do encourage you, and I'm not sure if you agree with this, Maggie, but to start off as an individual account when you're actually just setting up the account because it may take a little while to actually get your products ready, packaged, labelled, um, barcodes, all of that kind of stuff into the account. And so not to pay the um, the fees until you actually you've got your product in there ready to go. And then it's very, very easy to upgrade to the professional accounts once all of your products are actually in there. That's such a great point. You just don't really know how long it might take you to piece together all of the, the bits you need, especially if this is like starting out as a side hustle, for example. Um, and like Victoria mentioned, which we'll I'll touch on in the next slide, you are charged a monthly subscription fee as a professional seller, but you can upgrade or downgrade at any time, essentially. So, you know, that you're not making any sort of long time commitment, you do pay per month. And if you choo do choose to downgrade, you just won't be charged the next month. So without further ado, here's the, like I said, sort of a matrix slide of how cost is assessed for um, selling on Amazon. It's not complicated. It's more about that, that merged account, multi um, region, global selling account. And we want to make sure that we are doing right by our sellers, of course, and not, you know, overcharging or multiple or charging multiple selling fees. Um, the good news is that if you are a seller and you are planning to sell in multiple markets, you will pay a discounted professional selling fee of $39.99 USD per month. And it is charged in USD because it is, that will include your um, US selling account. This is charged at the time that the account is created and monthly thereafter, provided that you have at least one live product for sale listed in any store on the date of billing. When you're charged um, across marketplaces, across regions, your fee will actually be split across the currency of the local stores, but it will, I know it sounds like a lot of uh, things being pieced together, but it will ultimately always add up to $39.99 USD. Um, so you would receive a portion of your charge uh, in, U in AUD, and you may receive a portion of your charge in USD, but always, if you are selling in more than one Amazon marketplace, you will only ever pay $39.99 USD per month. If you're only choosing to sell in the US, which some do, you would just then pay that flat US um, professional selling fee of $39.99 USD per month. And if you are seller C and you say, I only want to sell in Australia, I'm not going to expand into any other global markets yet. I'm just going to start out with amazon.com.au. Um, you would be charged $49.95 AUD per month. And, and that excludes GS GST. So it really ends up being, I think, $54.95 per month with GST. So just so you know, that is um, like the base cost of a monthly professional selling account, which is inclusive of all of sort of the bells and whistles that come along with being a professional seller from a tools and listing and capability perspective. So that's the investment. There are these additional fees that come along with actual sales themselves. But um, in order to become a professional seller, you're looking at $49.95 AUD per month here in Australia. So those additional fees that you need to be mindful of. First and foremost, you will pay a referral fee on each of your items sold. Think of it like a commission. It's sort of the cost of doing business on Amazon's marketplace. 
Every time that you sell a product, Amazon takes a small commission. That referral fee is anywhere between 6 and 15% on the total cost of the product. So whatever you list your product for, including shipping, um, would be taken, like the percentage would be taken off of that in the form of a referral fee. You can see the, and those referral fees are determined by the type of product that you're selling. So you can see the full referral fee schedule on our website. It's also available on Seller Central if you have an active selling account. Um, just to be able to identify what the referral fee will be per um, product that you're selling. So a referral fee, as I said, is assessed on the product, not on the account as a whole. So even if you're selling um, mostly water bottles and then one day you decide to sell a pair of headphones, um, those will be subject to two different referral fees because they fall into different product categories. Now, that is between the monthly subscription fee and the referral fee that you'll pay. That is all that you can expect um, at a very base level when you're an Amazon seller. Now, we'll be talking so much more about fulfillment by Amazon, which is Amazon's fulfillment solution. It's um, sort of our flagship way of getting products to customers. And if you do choose to use fulfillment by Amazon, there's additional costs associated with that, just the same way that you would be paying postage to OzPost or you know, paying for packing materials on your own. So we'll discuss that a little bit more, um, actually a lot more in both this webinar and others, because um, it's a really important lever for success as a seller. Uh, it's also incredibly competitively priced, um, but it's not particularly straightforward. FBA fees are assessed on the weight and dimensions of the product itself. It's um, Your products are measured with like a QB scan uh, scale in our warehouse. And storage fees are also are also prorated by the amount of time that the product is stored in our warehouse and its size. So that uh, that's something that we'll be touching on a lot more later. And just one more quick note that media items, so like books, video games, and DVDs are also subject to this closing fee of a dollar eighty USD per month per or no, sorry, not per month per media item that is sold. So. Um, as a quick note on this slide, your monthly professional selling fee can vary whether or not the accounts that you have on various Amazon marketplaces are correctly merged. So if you're signing up for a brand new selling account now, your accounts will be merged. But if anybody in the audience is an existing seller and you're thinking, I sell in the US and in Australia, Victoria is a prime example of that. And you're like, I'm paying two monthly subscription fees. What the heck? You can, you can link and merge those accounts and we can resolve any sort of duplicate billing situations, but this merged account feature is something that we've implemented in the last year or two to avoid problems like this. So just wanted to call that out in case um, anybody's like alarm bells are going off. Okay, so to wrap up the account setup piece of this presentation, um, can I quickly Once jump in? Can I quickly yeah, jump sure. in just a little, yep. just from the last slide? Eva's just asked, are card and board games subject to closing fees? Ooh, so um, no. Are. They actually would be categorized uh, in toys. So I don't know. The short answer is no. They would, they would be part of the toys category. That is a good question. <laughs> he says, woo! <laughs> Toys is definitely one of the most popular categories. Okay, so what tax information do you need? So in the last piece of the setup, you would, after filling out a couple of form pages around your business, you would then be directed to your brand new Seller Central portal where you will be automatically logged into the market that you started the registration in. So again, if you go to amazon.com.au and you start your registration, you've registered for a selling account based in Australia. If you wanna just make sure you check up in the top, you'll see, wait, am I? No, sorry. <laughs> I think I've missed a slide here. Okay, wait a second. So, oh no, yeah, I'll show you this screenshot in just one second. So you, um, you'll be able to check which marketplace that you are, um, your Seller Central account is logged into when you first enter Seller Central and you can use a little drop down on the side to make sure or to, to toggle back and forth between the marketplaces that you are now automatically registered in. 
And from here, you will see this red box in the dashboard that's asking you to enter your tax information. You can see that there it says alert. Hopefully it's like <laughs> can att uh, attract your attention. Um, if you're selling on amazon.com.au only or at all, you will just need to confirm, confirm your business structure, whether you're a sole trader or an established business and submit your ABN. And in the US, the same is asked of you, um, but also it asks if you're a US resident and then you'll just need to complete the auto-generated form W8BEN to exempt you from any US tax reporting. So again, more information on this to come if you do decide to sell in the US, but just know that as an Australian business, you're perfectly eligible to sell on amazon.com without being subject to any sort of US tax. Okay, so this is where I wanted to show you. This is at the very top. You can use the drop down to switch between market locations. And also, um, you can add an additional region if for some reason, well, not for some reason, there are only 13 uh, markets that you're automatically registered in. Some are not part of the official global selling network, but you can always expand into any of those additional marketplaces that we have a presence in. So, I think that covers it. Yes, you can always find this in um, in Seller Central under uh, inventory and then sell globally and then selecting the additional stores that you want to sell in. I'm realizing now that this is a lot of reference to Seller Central for those who may not be um, selling yet in like you haven't actually registered for a selling account. It is truly like the portal with which you can find all of this stuff. So this may be hypothetical for now, but um, we'll I mean, you'll have access to this recording as well as any additional help resources to help guide you through this in the future. So the age old question, once you start selling, how are you gonna get paid? This is a lot, you'd be surprised at how many people are like, but wait, I need to know how I get paid. It's a good business question. So within Seller Central, you will be able to, to head to the statement view in your payments dashboard, and it will show you both how much you will expect to be paid on your next pay date and what that date will be. And this information is updated automatically. So it will always show up as the most uh, accurate reflection of your recent sales in the payments report. Once that payment is initiated, payments go through an automated clearing house. It can take up to five days to process before appearing in your bank account. And you'll find the amount that you'll receive and that date by selecting payments under the reports tab in Seller Central. That's where you can find your payments report. Okay, so now that we've covered we off a lot on, of... Before we sure. go on, Maggie, I was just wondering if you could answer a quick question. Somebody okay. has asked, um, are you able to sell professional services? Is it just products or, or services? The Amazon marketplace is exclusively a products um, marketplace. That's what I So we don't just offer any just sort of to double check. <laughs> That's yeah. okay. Um, this may be relevant though, as we get further down the track, we have a service provider network that if you are somebody with a service related to selling on Amazon, which could be why you decided to join us today, you can become part of the service provider network, which is not the Amazon marketplace, but it's a way for you to reach sellers to help them with their business. So more on that to come. Good question though. Okay, so we've covered off a lot of what's needed to get registered as a selling account. So let's talk about actually like how to sell on the marketplace and how to be successful. And the first thing that we're gonna cover is listings. There are two really important aspects of an Amazon listing. There's the product detail page and there's the offer. A product detail page is the page that you as a shopper are looking at when you click on a product and want to know more about it. And, and it has the little uh, panel on the side, which we call the buy, buy box or featured offer, where you can click add to cart. Now, this is important. Each product that is sold on Amazon has its own product detail page, even if there are multiple offers on that product. And that's relevant for anybody out here who is selling a product that they don't manufacture themselves, but that they resell. This was super common when I was working with toy sellers, like I said, I love the toys category. And a big toy, toy store would be retailing a bunch of Lego or a bunch of, um, a bunch of Playmobil or a bunch of like um, Barbie. Those are products, of course, that are owned by those big brands, but are resold by tons of toy stores around the world. 
So you would only see one product detail page on Amazon, even if that product is being sold by 10 different toy stores around Australia. The seller that creates the listing for the product in the Amazon catalog first generally has the primary ownership over that listing. But if that brand comes in and usurps <laughs> that product underneath their, uh, re their registered brand, that brand owner will then have more authority to control that listing within the catalog. That registration process happens through a program that we call brand registry. And we'll go into more detail on the actual brand registry process in a future webinar, which will be incredibly important for any of you out there who are brand owners and manufacturers. The second important aspect of the listing is the offer, which we will touch on in just a moment. So we'll quickly break down the anatomy of a product detail page. First, we have the product title. We have an example of how to best structure that title here. Brand, product name, material, or like key feature, and then um, identifiable factors like color, size, quantity. So like pack of two, if that's relevant. On the left-hand side of the page, you can find the photos and videos. And you, as a brand owner, you're eligible to upload videos. The main image and frankly, subsequent images should always be on a plain white background with the image of the product taking up about 75% of the square. Next, you can see bullet points. So this is where we call out our most important product, key product details like dimensions, materials, features, um, compatibility, like, you know, outlet type of stuff. Um, and beneath this is where you would include a product description. This is where you can dive deeper into things like feel, usage, benefits of the product, um, any sort of like product spiel, I guess you could say. And then lastly, on the right-hand side of the page is where you'll find the offers available on this product, uh, which detail the price of the offer as well as the delivery options available. Most products uh, will what we have will have what we call that featured offer box. That's a single offer from one seller that's given prominent placement and that add to cart or buy now button. The offer that is selected as the featured offer by Amazon is determined by which offers the best customer experience. And the factors that we consider when it comes to um, customer experience are, First and foremost, seller rating. So being a well-established and successful seller does pay off. Price and delivery option. Delivery option is um, something, again, that we'll cover a lot more when it comes to fulfillment by Amazon or fulfillment by merchant. But you can always learn more about these pieces of the featured offer by searching them in the Seller Central Help uh, portal. Okay, so earlier I mentioned that every product sold on Amazon has its own product detail page, which includes multiple offers. And if you're, I shouldn't probably drop this name, but if you are familiar with selling on eBay, you're probably thinking like, how is that possible? Because eBay has like a ton of different listings for the same product. And that's a big differentiating factor here on Amazon. One thing that we do differently is that we use product IDs, which are the same across multiple uh, or with our same across the product, no matter who's selling it, um, because they're assigned by the manufacturer. Sellers upload this piece of information, the product ID, into the Amazon catalog when they're creating listings so that any future sellers of the same product can match to their listing by using this unique identifying code. If you're selling or manufacturing products, you're probably familiar with the concept of this universal system called GTINs or Global Trade Identification System. And they take the form of a couple of different GTINs, UPCs, EANs, JANS or JANs, and then ISBNs. GTINs ensure products are uniquely identified while being bought and sold around the world. And they help, they help a lot to help sort and track um, products while they're in transit. In most instances, you will need to provide this GTIN when you create your product detail page. But if you already have, um, well, if you're a manufacturer, you will need to provide these. If you already have them, that's great. If you do not, um, there are a couple of ways that you can get them. So first of all, you can buy barcodes from gs1.org. This is the reputable site and source for acquiring GTINs. Um, you can also 
purchase as many barcodes as you, or rather you would need to purchase as many barcodes as you have products for. So even um, variations like color and size would need their own unique barcode. And you may be able to sell, it's important to know that you, you in some cases can sell products without a product ID by applying for a GTIN exemption. Um, you can learn exactly the criteria to apply for a GTIN exemption by searching in Seller Central. Um, it mostly just requires that you prove that you are the manufacturer of the product and that no GTINs exist for this product anywhere else. Okay, so let's touch on the second key component of the Amazon listing, and that's the offer. This is the price point, or the, it's not really a point, it's the price that you are choosing to offer your product for, as well as the shipping option that you are going to be offering to customers. You are totally in control of what price you set for your product. That goes for brand owners, that goes for um, resellers. It's always up to you. Amazon will not dictate what price you need to set. So do some research on the price point for similar products to yours. Determine what price is right for your product. It, it can be the same as other sales channels. I mean, that's a good customer experience. If you're selling the same product on your website, you should probably offer it for the same price, but you don't have to. Um, each product detail page is always, always going to contain multiple offers, even from different sellers for the exact same product. So doing some market research is pretty good business. Once you've created that listing and you've built out a thorough detail page, you've placed a competitive offer on your product, you can make that product live, but you have to consider how you're going to get your product to the customer that buys it. And that's where fulfillment comes in. So I've alluded so much to fulfillment. If you're already doing business, you're probably well aware and familiar of, you know, this aspect of business, especially in the last year or two. We've had so many challenges with um, logistics and shipping and supply. So I feel like a lot of people are pretty exhausted by speaking about fulfillment, but it's important as customers. We need to know that we're, um, you know, we can expect to get our product at a timely manner. So you've got two options for fulfillment when it comes to selling on Amazon. And the first, the one I've mentioned quite a bit is called fulfillment by Amazon. This means that you as a seller are going to send the stock that you have or that you're ordering from your manufacturer overseas to an Amazon fulfillment center. We have six of them. Amazon will store that inventory in our warehouse until a customer places an order. When they do, we have an incredible staff of warehouse associates who will pick and pack that order. They'll find the product on the shelf, put it in the box, send it off. Um, this is especially relevant for um, Amazon Prime, which is, of course, the loyalty program that Amazon customers opt into in order to receive uh, one or two day free shipping around the country. And then if for some reason there is a return request, a refund or a customer service query, Amazon handles it all. So all that to say, if you use FBA, you pretty much can hand your products off to Amazon and trust that they're in good hands to get to customers with really great customer experience. Alternatively, you can fulfill orders yourself. You can store your products in your own warehouse, whether that's a space that you rent or your garage, you know, doesn't matter to us. When the customer places the order, you're responsible for making sure that that product gets to the customer in a timely and professional way. So proper packaging, you know, communicating the cost and, and time, shipping timeframe. When that seller receives their order, um, you'll then get paid. And then if they have any customer service or return requests, you handle those yourself. Pretty similar to probably how you might be doing business on other channels. Tons more information on, on fulfillment in Seller Central, but we're also, I believe, number three and four of the webinar series will cover fulfillment in great detail. As I said before, there is a cost associated with fulfillment by Amazon. Um, the fulfillment fee is based on the weight and dimensions of the product. So we, we assess that at the time that the product arrives and then publish your fulfillment fee in your Seller Central account. So you'll know how much your fulfillment fee will be. Inventory storage is assessed as well on this prorated basis where um, products, uh, you essentially are charged $19 per cubic meter per month in a warehouse in Australia, but then that's prorated by the amount of space that the product takes up as well as the amount of time that it actually spends in the warehouse. So it can be hard to estimate because you don't know how long before a product is sold, it's gonna be stored, but it's often extremely low cost to store in our warehouse, um, especially for fast moving products. 
So these fulfillment fees are unique to Australia and will differ for um, the US or any other markets that you might want to sell in. So when you're doing some research on the cost, you can check out the Amazon or the Australia sell on Amazon website, sell.amazon.com.au or the same URL for another region. So sell.amazon.com for the US, for example. Um, there'll also be more information shared in our follow-up resources about fulfillment and cost and things like that. Okay, we are getting there, folks. I'm sorry, this has taken a little longer than I expected. I just get excited about this topic. Um, so now that you understand the information that we'll need to create a detail page, obtain product IDs, set pricing, fulfillment options, there's a couple of things to consider. Hence, Victoria's suggestion of starting on individual. You want to just make sure you have all your ducks in a row before you um, start paying your monthly, uh, monthly subscription fee. Here are the basics of navigating Seller Central, which this probably feels like a nebulous, uh, you know, other world that we've been referencing. But uh, when you get started selling on Amazon, you'll gain access to Seller Central. You, this is a free tool where you can, um, or not a free tool, it's like the portal with which you will sell um, all of your products. Housed within Seller Central is what we call Seller University. This is where you can gain access to instructional videos on all of these topics right within the Amazon platform. And it we have content covering the entire end-to-end -end seller experience from guidance on listings to setting up fulfillment, how to launch an advertising campaign, all of that good stuff. So if you need more information, Seller University should always be your first stop. And we have a lot of this content available on YouTube in case you are not yet a registered seller. So remember that when you do gain access to Seller Central, you can also search for all of these topics in the Seller Central help page. We have a search bar at the top of the portal, type in any keywords or topics that you might be curious about, and there's tons of articles for you to reference. Um, again, these are localized by the, the global store that you're selling in, so just make sure that you're searching in the relevant store if you have a question that's unique to Australia or um, the US. And finally, once you re you've reviewed Seller University and Seller Central, you may still be seeking additional support, and we have a couple of ways to do that. Um, the first place that I recommend going, which I referenced earlier, is our Seller Central Provider Network, which is a directory of third-party experts and providers who are offering services that support Amazon sellers. You can access this via Central Seller... <laughs> access this via Seller Central, there is a navigation drop down that will show um, on your screen and you can, or you can also just type in the Seller Central Provider Network and be directed to that, um, that directory. We can link you to that as well in our follow-up materials. We have 16 categories that providers can um, help out with. This is just the top 12 that um, we have highest engagement for in the AUNZ market. The most common uh, topics that people are seeking support on are storage, international shipping, compliance, and listings. Um, listings, of course, is one that we sort of touched on today and can be a huge help when you're getting started to make sure that you do it right the first time. Um, it's important to note that the Seller Central Provider Network is purely an informational database to help connect with businesses who have themselves chosen to be part of the network. Um, they have extensive experience supporting Amazon selling partners, um, but by contacting a partner on this network, you are um, contracting directly with them and not with Amazon. So we don't endorse a specific provider over another. Um, I guess that also kind of goes without saying, but just so you know that this is um, a resource for you, but not an endorsement or anything that Amazon is associated with. And last but not least, um, if you just have a quick question or are interested in learning more, we do have a seller support team that you can reach both through your seller central, or I guess you primarily reach them through your seller central account, but you can also get on the phone with them through that portal. And sales on amazon.com.au is going to be your best immediate resource for um, recapping anything that we just talked about, finding out about upcoming um, partner webinars and events like the series that we're running here with Business Station, um, that you can register for those there and find out about anything that's coming up soon. So we have reached the end of webinar one. Thank goodness that's it. Um, same time next week, we'll be covering setting up the Amazon selling account. So I talked about registering today, but once you register, we will then get into the entire listing process and starting to put the pieces, the building blocks in place to help you become um, a successful Amazon seller. 
So um, I'm happy to chat now with Victoria and answer some of the questions, but I think next week too will be a big topic to talk about your experience, Victoria, setting up your account and becoming um, a, live, a live seller. Absolutely. So we've thanks everybody. Thanks so much quick, for joining. We've got some quick questions just before we go. Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Oh, of course. I've got 10 more minutes. I can stop sharing my screen now if you'd rather. Yeah, see. that'd be great. I've just been my collating question. the questions so we can sure. answer them at the end. Okay. Uh, um, someone said, I've, I understand to sell on KDP, you have to have a bank account, the same currency as the Amazon site you're listing on. Not entirely true because of that merged selling account um, feature that we rolled out in the last couple of years. You just have to have the one for your primary account that you've registered in. And if you are um, if you are selling in another marketplace and you're getting paid in that currency, it will still be deposited into the bank account that you've registered for um, or that you've registered your selling account for. Just making sure on all of the, the, that documentation that the address is the same. It yes. all less. Yeah, Maggie talked about having your ducks in the row. That's um, having that there as well. Okay, so another question. How do, how do sellers create products to sell on Amazon sites if we only have an Australian currency bank account? I think that's the same question or close to the same question. Yeah, similar to the same question. Yep, so you can get paid into an Australian bank account. You don't have to have an, an American bank account if you're selling in right. America. That's from my experience and I'm pretty sure yep. that's like correct. Yep, that's so you, can, yeah, you don't have to open up an, another bank account in another country. Another question, has anyone successfully sold real estate on Amazon? I didn't even know you could sell real estate on Amazon. <laughs> I know you cannot sell real estate on Amazon as it's similar to the, the question we discussed earlier. It's a, it's a product e-commerce market. So yes. everything has to be a physical product or um, I guess the caveat is the, uh, the Kindle direct publishing or like Kindle products are yes. technically not. Yeah. This is another quite similar uh, question. Digital downloads. We can't, um, I shouldn't say we, I'm not Amazon, I'm business station, but <laughs> sellers, I am we, sellers, um, we can't sell um, digital downloads, um, but we can sell the um the question is, I can make machine embroidered patches and sell them as products. I'm just interested to see if Amazon has the capabilities to allow selling of the machine embroidery digital downloads as a zip folder. So again, I think that the best guidance here is that aside from a Kindle um, publication, everything needs to be a physical product on Amazon. Yep. And that's the um, next question, actually. Yeah. And that brings but, up an, uh, just a quick one, too, around customization. So, um, and I just did see the comment from Mani here that it is it is quite different than Etsy. It, in some cases, it could be more, um, the setup might be a little bit more um, involved. However, um, one thing to note is that we don't have the same capabilities to do customization um, as you might on another site. So the product needs to be advertised as is and sort of purchased as it's advertised. There isn't really a space for um, a customer to customize the order that they're placing. Yep. And Etsy, um, that's only fulfillment by um, merchant. It's not that's fulfillment true. by Amazon. Yeah, so the, com it, the complexity comes into this, the um, making it smooth for the customer at the other end, I feel. Um, I'll just quickly address Kara's question. Can customers leave a note on the order? Do you mean customers like um, uh, if the item is personalized, they can leave their name? So not, no, there's not really a, an opportunity for them to like contact you as the, um, as the seller when they're placing the order around like customization or specifics. And a number, uh, one key reason for that is because of how um, many sellers and how we, we do see a lot of success with sellers who are using fulfillment by Amazon, which means that as a seller, that product is being picked, packed and shipped by Amazon without, um, without the seller sort of touching the product for lack of a better word. So um, customers would place an order um, for a product exactly how they see it on the marketplace. And then the warehouse associates would be able to just pick it off the shelf and send it out. Cool. Okay, so 
So there's actually quite a lot of questions about KDP stuff. So this is a question. Okay. Does Amazon do printing on demand so, so there isn't the storage of a lot of stock thinking of hard copy books? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yep. Um, do. I I got to visit our warehouse in Sydney in November. I've been a couple of times, but this was the first time I've been since the print on demand like space had, had opened and I was blown away. What an incredible so invention. Fun. It's, uh, I love it. It's such a great space. I'll make sure but, to find... But- that there, Some more it's information. only paperback. It's not hard copy yet, is it? Oh, I don't know. The, I'm not confident in the answer to that. So I was just going to say, let me make sure I find um, a resource or something that we can share after the fact about print on demand and KDP and all of that. Because yeah, I just, I just as someone who worked exclusively through this with, process, actually, yeah. um, for hers. And she she ordered it. Beautiful quality, by the way. Um, and and she was making journals. And I'm pretty sure she couldn't get the hard copy in the Australian. She could just get the um, the paper. The paperback. Okay. Yeah, might have changed. Could have changed since then. I'm not totally <laughs> sure. So, but it is a great, it's a great resource for businesses who have an idea or like you said, want to save on storage space. So I'll make a note to follow up when I share some resources with you, Victoria, to, to pass on to everybody yep. um, about how to get started there. Well, we've got one more question. I think, um, do you need to create a separate brand for selling on Amazon? I have my own brand and sell through my website. My packaging shows my website address. So if I sell on Amazon, do I need a different one? Not at all. Nope. You are more than welcome to um, use the same brand that you have uh, your own website for. No issues, no like real issues with um, with having any sort of your like business contact information on the packaging. Um, it may be something that you strategically choose to get different Amazon packaging for, but um you absolutely, especially when starting out, can use what you have. Yeah, and where are the Amazon Fulfillment Centers located? Yeah, sure. Well, there's one in Perth, um, which we opened in December of 2020. Really I proudly to be uh, have our first yeah. WA footprint. Yeah. Um, we have two in Melbourne. We have one that was our very first one. And then we have a second one for Oversize that opened last year. We have um, two in Sydney. Our first robotics fulfillment center is had just opened a couple of weeks ago. It's the largest in the Southern Hemisphere. And then we have one in Brisbane. So that's four, I guess, four states, four states and territories. Six across um, four places. Yeah. This is a good question. And, and I think I know the answer. Uh, do you get a higher rating if you use FBA? Higher rating is, um, I'm not sure if it's like technically you get a higher rating, but it is, um, when it comes to that featured offer um, kind of assessment, when we consider customer delivery, like the delivery experience, FBA does, we have more faith or we we can better assess that the customer experience for uh, the, rather the delivery experience for a customer is better when using FBA. So it will have a significant impact on your success as a seller, both from a visibility perspective and a sales perspective. Preferred. <laughs> um, Marnie asks, Amazon policy for trademark copyright content designs, uh, copyright law US versus Australia. So perhaps we can find a link for Marnie and, um, and send it. Yeah, I d- I'm sure I'm not allowed to advise on these things. And I also don't feel uh, part- <laughs> particularly well-versed in, in the copyright law um, question, but let me see what I can find that's available to you from like a Seller Central resource. I was thinking I'm pretty sure that- there's stuff in Seller Central for that, for sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah because be, because you do need better than me very, trying to fudge something. <laughs> yeah, no, I think Marnie, you, this is a great question because you do need to be very very mindful. We don't want you to get into any sort of trouble if you have already created a product. Let's do the due diligence before you actually get to that stage, and yeah. and and set you on the right path for sure. So we we will do that. I'll get your email, or if you could put your email in there privately, message me so it doesn't go public, and we'll get some more information for you. I'll address one last quick question that I can see from Jay Walters. Um, do you need, uh, can you sell if you still need lead time? Meaning the way I interpret this is, a, is around pre-sale. We do not offer a pre-sale option in Australia, it, or I, I actually don't think we offer it anywhere. And that's partly because the um, customer experience that we kind of um, 
aim to deliver and, and that Amazon is known for is that quick access to um, to receiving your product. That's why we've invested so heavily in FBA and, and being able to deliver products to customers in a day or two. So we don't offer pre-sale because it can often be misleading to customers who think that because they have a Prime account, they should be receiving this product tomorrow. Um, so make sure everything's set up. And when you're ready to ship your product, I know there's a benefit, of course, to pre-sale because you can order what you've what you've received. Um, but it's great to start small, be able to get a couple of products on the ground and start to get some traction and then um, go from there. Right. So it's just a question um, about yeah. the presentation being sent. Yes, this recording will be sent to you with all of the gorgeous links that um, Maggie has mentioned. So um, fantastic. I'm just copying and pasting that so we can get back to you, Marnie. Thanks for that. And yeah, thank you so much, Maggie. Right. It was amazing. Yeah, we're right amazing. on time. Really I feel good. like we could keep going, but the good news I know, is we I know, seven but more you weeks. know, we've got all this amazing time. We've got another seven sessions that we can have some chats about. I hope that everybody yep. else can join us on the other sessions. Yes, and um, yeah, get your businesses going, my friends. Yes, Yay. Victoria is going to be a great testament throughout this entire series. We've got a couple other advisors joining, as well as um, someone else from Amazon who's going to be helping out. But, um, you know, we've got a real live tried and true Amazon seller here in our midst in Australia and in the US. So we hopefully between us will be able to answer all of your questions. So thank you, everybody, for joining. Really appreciate it. Wonderful to meet all of you virtually. And hopefully we will see you next Thursday. So thank thanks. you. Thank you very much for the, every, all the, bye, thanks the chats too. Really appreciate it. Bye. Yeah, bye.